Hello everyone and welcome back. Last class we talked about covering spaces and how for every subgroup of a given space there is a covering space which corresponds to that subgroup. Here's a natural question. How unique is that space that corresponds to that given subgroup? We're going to answer that question today as well as a host of related questions. So let's get to it. Before we start, let me give you a couple reminders of where we left off. So given a path-connected, locally path-connected, semi-locally simply connected space X, aka any reasonable space, if P from X twiddle to X is a covering space, then there, the induced map on the level of fundamental groups is injective. Moreover, for any subgroup, like I mentioned, there is a covering space so that the induced map on fundamental groups hits exactly that subgroup. Now, what are elements in the image of P star, where P is a covering map? It's the loops in X that lift to loops in the covering space. Remember, a loop can lift to a loop, or a loop can lift to a path. So the ones that end up in the image of the fundamental group are the ones that lift to loops. And finally, there is this lifting criterion for covering spaces. And it says that a map from an arbitrary topological space Y to our space X lifts to X twiddle if the induced map on fundamental groups lands inside the image of that covering spaces induced map on fundamental groups. So like I said, we're going to discuss uniqueness of covering spaces. But first of all, we need to answer the question, what is the right equivalence relation. So the equivalence relation on covering spaces. So remember, a covering space comes with this map. So if we want some equivalence, it needs to incorporate this map somehow. It's more than just a space. So this is called uh, covering space isomorphism. And let's give the definition. So let P from X twiddle one to X, let's call this P one and P two from X twiddle two to X B covering spaces. Then a homeomorphism X one twiddle to X two twiddle. Let's give this a name F is a covering space isomorphism if it needs to really like commute with the covering space maps. That is, uh, P2 composed with F is equal to P1. So let me draw the diagram here just so we can keep track of what I mean. Here's my space X. I have X1 twiddle covering and I have X2 twiddle covering. This covers by P1, this covers by P2. And there's a map that just makes this diagram commute. If I come around this way and do P1, it's the same thing as coming around this way and doing P2 composed with F. So what does this mean in particular? Like what's the picture? Uh, this means P1 inverse of X is sent to P2 inverse of X for all points X in X. I'll draw the picture here. Here's my base space. These points here live in, live in capital X. Uh, and above it, I have like X1 twiddle, uh, X2 twiddle, 
X3 twiddle. And here I have another, another covering space. And the points above here, let's just call them uh, X1 prime twiddle, X2 prime twiddle, and X3 prime twiddle. And essentially there's just like a permutation up here. So the points get flip-flopped around, but the ones above X get sent to points above X is the idea. So here is a proposition. If X is path connected and locally path connected, then two path connected covering spaces are isomorphic via an isomorphism taking base points x1 twiddle to x2 twiddle if and only if so I'll set down a little more notation here p1 star of x1 twiddle little x1 twiddle is equal to p2 star of x2 twiddle at little x2 twiddle base point. So in plain English, this means that the covering spaces are isomorphic if their induced maps land in exactly the same subgroup. So let's prove this. One direction is easy. Suppose uh, f from x1 twiddle with base point little x1 twiddle to x2 twiddle down to little x2 twiddle uh, is a covering space isomorphism. So by definition, this means that p1 is equal to p2 composed with f, and f is a homeomorphism. So let's just see what happens on the induced maps on the fundamental group. So that means p1 star of pi1 of x1 twiddle is equal to p2 star of f star of pi1 of x1 twiddle. Uh, of course, I, I really should put pi ones in the statement here. I'm just gonna rig that up. I think it was clear what I meant, but let me just make it actually right. Okay, now, f, Remember, a covering space isomorphism, uh, isomorphism is, in particular, a homeomorphism on the underlying topological spaces. So F star is a homeomorphism. So, or sorry, F is a homeomorphism. So F star is an isomorphism on uh, is an isomorphism. So, in particular, F star of pi one of x one twiddle is the entire pi one of x two twiddle, and so p one star of pi one of x one twiddle is equal to p two star of pi one of x two twiddle, and that's all we needed. That's one direction of the proof. The other direction is more interesting and also a little bit complicated. It's, it's not too long, but it's one of these almost tautological things. So let's go the other way. So going the other way, if P1 star of pi1 of x1 
twiddle. Now I'll keep track of base points. Uh, if this is equal to p2 star of pi 1 of x2 twiddle with the base point x2 twiddle, then by the lifting criterion that we discussed in the introduction to this class. So there exists like P1 lifts to a map P1 twiddle from X1 twiddle to X2 twiddle. So let me just give you a picture of what's going on here so we can keep track of it all. I have X1, we normally think of this as above X, X2, twiddle, and I have a map P1, and this map satisfies the hypothesis of the lifting criterion. That is, the fundamental group lands in the right place. And therefore, there exists a map up here, P2 twiddle, uh, sorry, P1 twiddle, which commutes with the map P2. But similarly, P2 lifts to P2 twiddle from X2 twiddle to X1 twiddle. And both of these are once space points are chosen. And I'm going to choose this so that uh, P1 twiddle of X1 twiddle is X2 twiddle. So it's sending my favorite point in X1 twiddle to the favorite point in X2 twiddle. Uh, now, and similarly, I'm going to send P2 of X2 twiddle to P1 of X1 twiddle. But now, P1 twiddle and P2 twiddle are continuous and also if you do P1 twiddle and then you do P2 twiddle here's a fun game you can keep track of how many times in this class I say the word twiddle uh, if I do this on X1 twiddle it undoes itself so let me add some more stuff to this diagram here, uh, and you'll see why soon. So I also have this map P2 twiddle going backwards, and now let me just take another copy of X1 twiddle, and it will also map over to X by P1, and I also can map it up to X1 twiddle by either the identity or by P1 twiddle composed with P2 twiddle. So the identity on X1 twiddle and P1 twiddle composed with P2 twiddle of X1 twiddle are both lifts of P1. Moreover, oops, sorry about all the movement, which agree at X1 twiddle. And remember, if two lifts 
agree at even a single point, they're the same lift. So P2 twiddle composed with P1 twiddle is equal to the identity map. And similarly, P1 twiddle composed with P2 twiddle is equal to the identity map. So P1 and P2 are inverse homeomorphisms. And there you have it. These two spaces are covering space isomorphic. The fact that they commute with the maps tells you that they're covering space maps. And this tells you that they are homeomorphisms. So this was all with keeping track of a base point. Now let's relax that condition and we'll get our final classification theorem for covering spaces. So here is our like big, big theorem. Um, let X be a path connected, locally path connected, and semi-locally simply connected space. Then there's a bijection between sets of base point preserving isomorphism classes of covering spaces p from x twiddle x not twiddle to x x not and the set of subgroups of pi 1 of x with a base point x naught. This is what we've already shown. And here's what we're going to add. Moreover, if base points are ignored, in other words, I'm allowed to just change the base point of my covering space, then we get a bijection between isomorphism classes of path connected coverings p from x twiddle to x and the new relation we add here is conjugacy classes of subgroups of pi 1 of x uh, with the base point x naught. Okay, so all that's left to prove here is the case without uh, base points. So let uh, x naught twiddle and x1 twiddle be two base points in P inverse of x naught for P from a covering map. Now, how did we change base points before? We looked at these change of base point homomorphisms that came from paths. And we're going to do the same thing here. So let gamma twiddle be a path in x twiddle 
from x0 twiddle to x1 twiddle. Now, p of gamma twiddle is a loop in x representing some element g in pi 1 of x with the base point x0. So the picture here is uh, here's my covering map, P. I had a path up here, but of course, these two points, they both project down to the same image. And so I get a loop here, and this I'm going to call G. All right. Now, if F is a loop based in x not twiddle this has let's give these names this is x not twiddle and this is x1 twiddle and so here is a loop uh, and this we called gamma twiddle well then First, if I do gamma twiddle bar composed with F composed with gamma twiddle, this is a loop based at x1 now. So I, I start at x1 twiddle and I run backwards on gamma twiddle, I run around F and then I come back. And that's how I get a loop uh, in x1 twiddle. OK, now let's project this down. The homotopy class of P of gamma twiddle bar composed with F composed with gamma twiddle is equal to G inverse composed with something I'll call H, composed with G. And moreover, why am I calling this H? Well, this is something that lifted to a loop in this covering space. And so this is in the image of P star of pi 1 of x twiddle at x naught. Okay, so uh, now letting, I'm going to take two groups, hi, which is the map on fundamental groups of pi 1 of x twiddle with the base point xi twiddle, where i is, you know, either 0 or 1. Uh, we have shown that G inverse H0 times G is a subset of H1. You take any element of H and you conjugate it by this element. You take any element of H0 and like we did up here, if you conjugate it by an element of G, you land in H1. Okay, now reversing the path, gamma twiddle above shows the opposite uh, that G H1, G inverse, is a subset of H naught. Now let's conjugate this second containment by G inverse to get 
H1 is a subset of G inverse H naught G. And so these two subgroups are contained in each other and therefore they're equal. That is H1 is equal to G inverse H naught G. Okay, so what have we just shown? We've shown that changing the base points amounts to conjugating the group downstairs. Now I want to show you that conjugating the group downstairs corresponds to changing base points. So conversely, suppose H0 and H1 are conjugate subgroups of pi 1 of x with the base point x0. Now, and, and let's just say we have a particular conjugating element we like. h1 is g inverse h0 times g. Okay, now let gamma in x be a loop representing g. Now, lifting g to a path in uh, x twiddle starting at x naught and repeating the argument before gives the desired result. That is that uh, when I change base points upstairs by this path I get these conjugate groups downstairs. And there it is. That's basically a summary of everything we've learned about covering spaces. Here's a nice little corollary. So since there is only one conjugacy class of trivial groups, there's there's really there's only one trivial group is all I'm saying. So in a given group, we get this corollary, which is that universal covering spaces are unique up to covering space isomorphism. So this justifies us calling it the covering space and not, sorry, the universal cover and not a universal cover. Okay, so now we understand covering spaces up to isomorphisms. And here's something common in math in general. Once you understand an object up to isomorphism, the next thing you do is understand the isomorphisms themselves. And these are called deck transformations. So let's just set down the definition. Uh, let P from X twiddle to X be a covering space not necessarily with a favorite lift upstairs. Now, a deck transformation of 
X twiddle is a covering space isomorphism. F from X twiddle, let's call it capital F, from X twiddle to X twiddle. It's very easy to show that the group of such iso, sorry, the, the set of such isomorphisms is a group. If you compose two isomorphisms, you get an isomorphism. The inverse of an isomorphism is an isomorphism and it's associative. So the group of such isomorphisms is denoted G of X twiddle. So here's something we encountered before, but I'll just remind you of again. By the unique lifting property, a covering isomorphism, uh, and by that virtue, a deck transformation is determined by where it sends a single point. Okay, so let's just look at some examples of such objects. Let's start with our favorite covering space. So let P from R to S1 be the usual universal covering. Uh, let me draw this out. Here is S1 and then above it is R and it looks like this helical thing. So here's a point downstairs and here are three of its lifts upstairs. And this thing also continues downwards, but then it would intersect the circle and so I'm not gonna draw it for, so the picture doesn't get too messy. So then vertical transfer uh, translations are the deck transformations. I'm not going to justify many of these, but uh, I think this is fairly intuitive. Uh, so there's the shift vertically, and I can also shift vertically down. And there is this smallest shift vertically, which is in R, it looks like a shift by an integer. So here, G of X twiddle is isomorphic to Z where the generator is shift up once and the inverse of the generator is shift down once. Uh, similarly, if P from S1 to S1 is the end sheeted cover, this one has a nice formula, P of Z is equal to Z to the N. So this is like z in the complex number with the modulus of z equal to 1. So that's s1. And if I take that to the nth power, I get a covering that. And there was a picture of this, uh, which looked like I have s1 downstairs. And I'll just draw, uh, here is n is equal to 3. The way to draw this is you draw 3 copies of the circle upstairs, but we want this to be connected. So cut out a little bit here, and you climb the parking garage, climb the parking garage, and then come all the way back down. So that's the covering space when n is equal to three. Uh, so you can pause the video here and think about what are the deck transformations here? So first of all, a deck transformation needs to shift those blue points around. And 
what it turns out to be is uh, if we rotate S1 by 2 pi over n, we get the generator of the deck transformation of the group of deck transformations. What I mean by rotation here is a little weird, but I'll I'll draw one of such rotation out for you, and uh, I think you'll figure it out. So this is what I mean by rotation. It's like rotate around here and bring everything like drag all of the points around this connected circle by two pi over n, where the whole circle is two pi. Okay, and let me give you maybe a more complicated example. So here is a covering space of the wedge of two circles. So I have my wedge of two circles down here. One loop is going to be called A, and one loop is going to be called B, and I will send all of these outside loops to A, going around in an oriented fashion like this. And I'll call the inside loops B. So make sure each vertex has two A's, one coming in, one coming out, and uh, two B's, one coming in, one coming out. And that is enough to specify a covering space. Uh, so think about what the deck transformation group here is. So I need an isomorphism of the space upstairs, which for example, is gonna send all of these vertices to other vertices and all of maybe these points to each other. They're all lift to the midpoint of this loop here. And those blue points are the lift to this point here. Uh, so I'll just tell you here, G of the covering space is Z mod 4. And it's generated by taking that circle and just clicking it counterclockwise. It's generated by rotating the circle by pi over 2 pi over 4. So, shoot, that's. Uh, JVX twiddle generator. All right. So for this last little thread of this class, we're going to discuss a special feature a covering space could have. Here's a definition. A covering space P from X twiddle to X is called normal if for every x in the base space and two points x not twiddle and x one twiddle in the lift so this is p inverse of x, there exists a deck transformation taking x not twiddle to x one twiddle. That is, f of x not twiddle is x one twiddle. So intuitively, these are the covering spaces. with the most symmetry. No point is distinguished among any other point. So I'll scroll up here. Some examples are one, two, and three above. For example, uh, in this 
covering of the wedge of two circles, number three. For any two blue points, there is a rotation taking you between them. And in number two, again, for any two blue points, there is a rotation of the circle taking you between them. And for number one, if I shift enough, I'll get between any two blue points. So I think it's more informative to show you what a non-example is. Here's a covering space of the wedge of two circles. Uh, it has a loop like this, which is A. And then it's got paths, which are going to project to uh, B. Uh, so I'm struggling with these orientations. Ah, yes, it goes like this. B, B, B. And this is A. Then A coming backwards. And then finally, over here, I'll have a loop corresponding to B. And this is going to project down to my wedge on two circles. And I claim this is not a normal covering space. Here's why. Let's look at this point here, uh, X. Now, it's going to lift to a couple points. It lifts to all of the midpoints of the edges labeled B. So this is like x0 twiddle, x1 twiddle, and x2 twiddle. So we see this is a triple cover. But somehow, this is not symmetric. There is a covering space isomorphism sending x1 twiddle to x2 twiddle. It's you just put a vertical line in, like, cutting all the circles in half and flip across it. But there is no ISO taking X not twiddle to X one twiddle or X two twiddle. And why is this? Well, here's the idea. If I leave from X1 twiddle and I go to the left, I hit this red vertex here. And if I go to the right, I hit the purple vertex here. So going to the left and going to the right sends me to two different vertices. However, if I look at X not twiddle and I leave to the left, I land here at the green vertex, and if I leave to the right, I also land at the green vertex. So there isn't even a homeomorphism taking me between these two uh, pieces here. So I'll just indicate that here. Uh, so leave out of points to different vertices. or the same vertex. So this is x1 twiddle and x2 twiddle, whereas x0 twiddle, you go to the same vertex. So here's a natural question. Why are they called normal? Uh, here's somewhere else we see the word normal, normal subgroups, right? And it turns out there's a very intimate relation between normal coverings and normal subgroups. And that's what this proposition makes uh, concrete. So let P from X twiddle, X not twiddle to X, X not be a covering space. Uh, and let's have our usual Assumptions, path connected, covering space of a path connected, locally path connected, semi-locally simply connected space 
x and let h be the subgroup which is the image of this covering map of pi 1 x1 x twiddle x not twiddle so I'm looking at this inside of pi 1 of x x not some subgroup then h is normal this is as a subgroup if and only if p is normal as a cover second the deck transformations are isomorphic to little weird looking thing but the normalizer of h over h that is where n of h is the normalizer of h and g in particular if p is a normal cover then g of x twiddle is the quotient pi 1 of x x naught over h. So being a normal subgroup means that the whole group is your normalizer, right? So that's how you get this. And if here's another thing that just follows immediately. So for the universal cover, the deck transformations are isomorphic to pi 1 of x. And the idea here is that now h is the trivial group if p is a universal cover. OK, let's prove these. So let's prove 1. So recall that changing a base point in the cover changes the subgroup by conjugation. And this conjugation is by gamma and pi 1 of x, which lifts to a path between the two base points. OK. Now, Gamma, what if this is in the normalizer of H? Well, that would mean that con being in the normalizer means when you conjugate by this element, you don't change the group. Okay, so then uh, let's give these base points a name, x naught twiddle and x1 twiddle. So that means that P star of pi 1 of x twiddle with the base point x naught is the same as p star of pi 1 of x twiddle with the base point x1 twiddle. Well, this is what we proved earlier. If the induced maps are the same, then the covers are the same. This is 
the uh, covering spaces. are base point preserving. Isomorphic. Okay, so that's what would happen if one element was in the normalizer. Now, what if everything is in the normalizer? Okay, H is normal means everything's in the normalizer, n of h is equal to h, well, this last criterion here tells me that the covering spaces with any base point are base point preserving isotopic, so there's a, a deck transformation between any two of them. So that means P from X twiddle to X is normal. Okay, so that's part one. Now for part two, remember we're trying to show, let me scroll back up to the statement, that the group of deck transformations is the normalizer modulo the group itself. So let phi from the normalizer of H to G of X twiddle send an element gamma to the deck transformation sending X not twiddle to X one twiddle. So how does this go? Well, it's a little bit non-constructive. Uh, I, I essentially just follow this chain of implications up here. If I have something in the normalizer, I know the base point, uh, the, the covering spaces are base point preserving isomorphic by some isomorphism. Okay, so uh, you can check. I'm just not gonna fill in the details here uh, that Phi is a homomorphism and subjective. So the kernel of this map is, well, essentially it, they're all just change of base point maps, right? So the loop in NH, the normalizer, lifts to a path and it lifts to the deck transformation, shifting those paths around. The kernel of this map is loops in X, which lift to loops in X twiddle. If, if it actually lifted to a loop, then it sends the base point to itself and by this one point property for lifts, it's actually just the identity map. So what are these though? These are elements of like loops that lift to loops are elements of the induced map on fundamental groups, which we've called H. And again, by the first isomorphism theorem, NH mod H is isomorphic to the image G of X twiddle. So let's finish today's class with just a example of all of this in motion. Small example, and then we'll wrap it up. So let P from S1 to S1 be this covering map from before. Now, I asserted before that the group of deck transformations was isomorphic to Z mod N. Here's why. Since pi one of S1, this is Z, is abelian, 
every connected cover is normal. So every subgroup is normal because it's abelian. And by our theorem from before, every connected cover is normal. Moreover, in this case, G of X twiddle is the normalizer of H over H. Well, yeah, in this case, the normalizer of H is the entire group Z. And H, what is the induced map of the map Z to the N? So you look at what it does to a, a single loop. It makes it wrap around N times. And so the H is, is NZ. And therefore, we see that the group of deck transformations is Z mod NZ, like I claimed. Okay, so that's going to do it for today. Next class, we are going to finish up our discussion of covering spaces, but we're going to sort of take a different approach and turn all of this on its head. We're going to start with the group of deck transformations and see how we can tell the same story from another perspective. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.